Welcome to High Vibe Astrology. This is Jennifer, back with a video on the astrology affirmations and frequencies for Sedna moving into Gemini. I've already done a video on Sedna's ingress into Gemini and Sedna's energy in general because for the last 20 years, Sedna has been quite impactful on the collective evolution of consciousness. And I say that because we are finishing up the nodes in the cycle of Taurus and Scorpio. And just one month after Sedna moves into Gemini, we will have the nodes shifting out of Taurus, Scorpio and entering Aries and Libra. But the last time the nodes were in Taurus and Scorpio was 2003, the year that Sedna was discovered. This is no coincidence. This is really monumental. And I think it's so important for us to understand that Sedna has been very instrumental in awakening the human family about the infinite possibilities that are available to us to rise above duality and the extreme polarity that we are constantly bombarded with in the geopolitical arena, in the world, on the world stage, um, on the news, wherever we look, there is duality, polarity, and um, extreme contrast. Sedna is offering the a third solution. And that is why I talk about the third symbol of Scorpio and the eagle and how, why that's important. I go into that in the first video, so I don't really need to talk about that here. What I do want to say is that just like in the myth, Sedna's death created the infinite marine life that now provides sustenance to people of the world, people in every community, but of course, um, in the myth, it was the Inuit community. Sedna also gave birth in 2003 to all of these Kuiper Belt objects that astronomers are now finding. But Sedna was the very first one to be discovered. And in 2003, she was the first planet to be named outside of Greco-Roman tradition, bringing ancient history back to North America. And so all of these Kuiper Belt objects now that astronomers are talking about um, and astrologers are talking about are mirroring exactly what Sedna's myth illustrated. Sedna's death and transformation into the immortal sea woman and giving life, infinite life to the, the oceans and recognizing how very little we know about life in the oceans um, mirrors exactly what is going on in the cosmos. All of these planets that are out there that are just now being discovered, um, you know, there's, there's so much that we do not know about the cosmos and nature of it. So the ocean on this planet really mirrors the infinite arena of the cosmos. And that is why Sedna's energy is so very important in this story that is unfolding, story of humankind, um, where we've been, where we are now, what we are becoming. And it boils down to us taking responsibility for our own personal narrative. What is the story we are telling ourselves? What is the story we are creating for ourselves. Sunness energy is about infinite possibility, creating positive life stories that don't just benefit ourselves in our own life, but also benefit the entire human family and all beings in the natural world. So it's about living in harmony with the earth. Anyway, there's always so much more that I can say about Sedna, but please refer to my book on Sedna. Um, that link is in the window below and also the link to the first video I did on Sedna's ingress into Gemini. But I'd like to talk about now some of the aspects, the important aspects in the chart of Sedna moving into Gemini, and then I will end with the affirmations and frequencies. This chart is going to be in effect for quite some time. So it's a signature that will 
unfold gradually, but will definitely begin to take effect on June 15th. So I'm going to just kind of quickly go through those aspects. So to begin with, we have Sedna conjunct the moon. Sedna is the star of this chart because it is about this planet moving into the sign of Gemini. Sedna-moon conjunction is about multidimensionality, entering the public emotional space and psyche. It's going to be touching upon ancestral roots and our ancient history as well. Something will be coming into the public psyche, public consciousness, and many unconscious feelings and energies will also be rising to the surface because, as we know, sudden is energy and myth is about the deep unconscious and going through a shamanic initiation, going through the depth, the abyss, to allow the transformation and alchemy to take place that then taps us into our immortal essence. And there is a deep, deep history, long history that Sedna is bringing back into the conscious collective. There is a conjunction also between Moon and Uranus. This could bring about culture shock, uh, emotional upheavals, public epiphanies, and sudden awakenings. Sudden conjunct Mercury is going to affect the media, communication in some way. And again, I see, um, I anticipate some sort of demise in mainstream media, followed by a rebirth. And it will also be demise and rebirth of our mindset as one people, as a human family. And this is going to be drastically transformed over the coming years while Sedna is in Gemini. We have a Venus-Mars conjunction, which is the union of the polarities and also the union of the rulers of the South Node and North Node. So these polarities are coming together in the heart space represented by Leo. This is representing a return to innocence, to trusting source, symbolic of the sun, to guide us, to awaken us, to um, each moment bring to light and illuminate what it is that we need to do. What is our next step? Leo is very much about staying in the present moment. Um, it's like the actor on stage with a spotlight on them, you know, receiving, almost improvising. There's a creative aspect of improvising and just staying tuned in to what the God force energy is inspiring us to do, staying very much in the moment. Then we have Jupiter conjunct the North Node, and this is representing expansive good luck and higher mind and growth in the realm of peace and prosperity, represented by that Taurus North Node. Next, I'm going to talk about the squares. The first one is Mercury and Saturn. I see this as authority coming to the media, restrictions in the media or regulations, perhaps a new structure for communication. Um, it can also be on the personal level, individuals really um, disciplining their own mind. It can so literally mastery over the human mind, realizing too the power of our language and words to create or destroy and really learning to master our words and language for positive use. Next, we have Venus and Jupiter in a square. This is going to be expanding our values of peace, prosperity, and pleasure. Venus represents material resources, relationships, and how we give and receive love and affection. So, Jupiter will be shine, you know, will be expanding this energy, the ability to give and receive love and give and receive abundance. The sun in a square to Neptune, I see as the sun awakening what has been in slumber, Neptune, what has been, you know, the energy of feels like it's been living in a dream or living out a dream 
a fantasy or a nightmare, an illusion. And the sun is bringing illumination to this movie that has been playing out in our world. We also have Mars and Uranus in a square, and I see this as sudden action, impulsive action. Mars is also martial, meaning military. So there could be sudden military action or appearance on the scene. We also have Pluto forming a T-square to the south and north nodes. So this is about transforming and alchemizing humanity's destiny and purpose. This has been going on and will continue for a while. The next grouping are the sextiles. We have Mercury sextile Venus. With Venus in Leo, this is a love for children, a love for the inner child, for innocence. And uh, this is coming. what's coming to mind, literally, Mercury and Gemini. And also probably stories around a love for children coming to the media, which is Mercury in Gemini. We have the moon and Uranus in a conjunction, making a sextile to Neptune. This is about awakening the public with compassion, Neptune, regarding what has been institutionalized, imprisoned, hidden, and finishing up a karmic cycle, finishing up the age of Pisces and the era of the victim savior. Last but not least, we have Jupiter and Saturn in a sextile. And this I see as universal law represented by Jupiter and order represented by Saturn coming together to provide new opportunities and also new laws that are being given a new structure and put into place in our society. So that is a very general laundry list of the aspects I see in this chart. Please stay tuned for the following affirmations and frequencies. Also keep in mind that this chart will only begin to take effect on this date, June 15th, and will continue to unfold for the duration that Sedna is in the sign of Gemini. We'll see some of this unfold from now until November 25th, and then Sedna goes back into Taurus and won't come back to Gemini until April of 2024 and will remain there until 2067. But I feel overall this is a lot to look forward to. It is a lot to unpack. There are going to be many, many things that we thought were myth, fantasy, legendary, that will actually turn out to be very real. This is Sedna in Gemini, um, an unreal, quote unquote, world represented by Sedna coming into the mind of the practical application, which is Gemini. So I hope you find this helpful. Please leave me a comment. If you do, please continue to like, share, and support this channel. I always appreciate your support. I look forward to being with you again. And in the meantime, wishing you well. This is Jennifer. Sedna with the moon for the conjunction. The deep unconscious and forgotten spaces in my emotional psyche are rising to the surface to receive new understanding. for the conjunction. As emotional awakening takes place, I am committed to staying grounded in the promise of peace, prosperity, and harmony. Sedna and Mercury for the conjunction. I am growing into a new understanding of the ancient myths and legends once thought to be pure fantasy as being potentially more real than what we've been taught is our history.
Venus and Mars for the conjunction. The polarities we've traditionally considered to be in competition are simply complementary forces that receive guidance from the heart space and unite in divine harmony and trust. Jupiter and Venus for the North Node Conjunction. Our collective destiny is supported by the universe with growth, expansion, faith, optimism, and prosperity for all. Mercury and Saturn for the square. As I hold myself accountable and reclaim my own authority for my thoughts and words, I am committed to creating positive life stories that bring about the best in my life and in the world. Venus and Jupiter for the square. I welcome the expansion of life's true beauty, harmony, love, and abundance in my world and the world at large. Sun and Neptune for the square. As others awaken to the dormant places within their psyche, I respond with compassion and stay committed to my own awakening process. Mars and Uranus for the square. As I take responsibility for my own independence and freedom, there is no need to fear another's act of aggression nor to act aggressively towards anyone else. Pluto, Mars, and Venus for the square to the nodes. As I look to a brighter future for myself and humanity, I invoke the highest and best for all, and any trauma from the past simply fades into nothingness. Mercury and Venus for the sextile. When my thoughts and words are beautiful, my world becomes beautiful too.
the moon, Uranus, and Neptune for the sextile from Neptune, a change for the ages is unfolding at an unprecedented pace and bringing with it a brand new era of peace and awakened humanity. Jupiter and Saturn for the sextile. When universal law forms the foundation for human law, the world knows everlasting peace as if for the first time. <laughs> 